Good afternoon all. Uh, Christmas is over. So let's put the decorations to one side and bring in this because we've been down to the sales to try and get some bargains. And uh, my wife found this. It's an LED G9 bulb uh, from Sainsbury's and it's reduced from £4 to just £1. So can I make a video out of this? Yes, I think I probably can. It's going to be a cheap one. Um, yeah, this is an ugly looking thing, isn't it? And I've no idea what G9s are actually used in. Uh, my wife bought this because the light in our fridge, which is a 15 watt pygmy incandescent bulb, uh, blew and she just bought whatever she could find. Um, of course, it doesn't fit the fridge, of course. Um, so yes, this is 220 to 240 volts. It's actually very difficult to see that. I think the details are all on the back. Yeah, 220 to 240 volts. Uh, AC, obviously, it should say that really, shouldn't it? Um, 2700 Kelvin is the colour temperature. Of course, it's A plus rated. Uh, full instant light, start time's very short. Warm colour, non-dimmable. So let's get this thing uh, out of its blister pack and see if we can power it up. I'm going to need some mains, aren't I? But you see, I don't really do mains because, well, I don't have a G9 uh, socket, so I couldn't really apply mains to this thing safely. So I'm going to do it slightly differently. So I'm going to use this to power it. Um, it's a little mini inverter step up thing, uh, 12 volts to well around 220. We can measure that uh, to make sure we're putting the full voltage across this thing. So let's get 12 volts on here and put a couple of leads over to the bulb and see if we can light it up. So 12 volts on here. Um, I've got 13 and a half from the solar panels today because it's sunny. Uh, so let's block some light off so we can see what's going on. Switch that on. Now that's measuring current. So this thing produces a high voltage here. Um, it's safe, but I'm not going to touch this because I'd probably still feel it. Um, and that's taking 60 uh, milliamps, just sort of quiescent current to, to run the circuitry. So let's turn that off, connect some leads to my bulb and see if it lights up. Right, I've got some uh, crop clip leads here, but uh, to be honest, black and red doesn't make a lot of sense because this is AC here alternating current so let's use red and red right so let's plug the um the two leads onto the bulb now uh i've looked at the bottom of this and it's the one sticking out the side there <laughs> got no 3d vision when i'm looking through my camera uh which is the other one it's this one here so let's see if this lights up oh yeah Right, this is uh, 2.4 watts equivalent to 18 watts if it were an incandescent bulb. Actually, that would have been about right for the fridge. But uh, the fridge has a, I think it's an SES, small Edison screw bulb. This wouldn't have fitted. Um, this is actually drawing 3.1 watts uh, from my 12 volts input. Uh, but of course, the inverter there is consuming some of that energy and so I don't know what the voltage on the output here is I suppose I should measure that next right AC volts so that can go there and there what have we got oh it's quite low 176 um, I can probably push my 12 volts up a bit well they're probably not much actually let's have a look 12 because there's going to come a point where it won't go any higher because I've only got 13 and a half coming in um, Okay, 12.6 is all we've got as a maximum. What's that reading on the inverter output? Well, only 186, but uh, well, that's enough to light that bulb up. And uh, you can see that it's um, quite a nice warm white color, sort of yellowy white. Compare this pool of light with over here, which is being lit by daylight. Um, right, okay, so let's turn this uh, off and take this thing apart and see what's inside. Um, right, this thing's warm, it's not hot, which is um, not what this thing says on the back. It says here, uh, light bulbs are very hot. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, but there's no obvious way that this comes apart. That does 
rotate a bit so I should be able to pull the base out hopefully it won't break uh, no residual charge across there and my guess is that this is a capacitive dropper circuit in there okay let's start trying to uh, wedge that out right well digging my screwdriver in there isn't yielding much so I think I might have to go for the slightly more brutal pliers on there and bend it until it breaks I'm pretty sure this thing is assembled uh, by pushing this base into the uh, top housing but it's probably got sort of one-way click barbs that lock in so it's going to take some encouragement to get it out is my guess oh yeah that's really not happening hmm right i've managed to prise the top off and we have four little leds which are probably about three millimeters uh square so 30 30 or something of that description and i think that tube is gonna pull off now yes it does or the base has pulled off and there's a large capacitor which would hint at this being a capacitive dropper circuit right well it looks to me like um there's a little circuit board in there a little module and i can see i uh, think a bridge rectifier i think an electrolytic capacitor and then the wires come either side of this sort of plastic bridge across here and go to the led so i think there's really only one way to deal with this and that's to smash it okay so uh, interestingly this thing has a little cut or a routed line in the pcb to provide well what isolation but what's the point of that because the whole thing sort of sealed inside this uh, container you can't touch any part of this so why would they bother to provide a, an isolation gap there between output and input i don't quite understand that um there's the capacitor now it looks large enough to be mains rated uh, a reasonable size to provide the necessary uh, reactant so that it behaves as a, uh, a voltage dropper a capacitive voltage dropper there's the bridge rectifier you can see the minus and the plus on there there's a fairly large value resistor there that's presumably for uh, current limiting but what's interesting is there's a little control chip here and i can read the number on it so i can get that um, but also an inductor there's um, a 400 volt one microfarad electrolytic there but what's that inductor doing is this actually um, a chip which is providing a current regulated supply to these leds it looks like it might be but with a capacitor dropper as the mains to low voltage power supply um, simply because it's small and this thing is completely uh, isolated and sealed from fingers touching the nasty mainsy bit let's just check if this thing's still working and uh, yeah that's still working absolutely fine which is good because i kind of thought it might be quite interesting to uh, take a look at this circuit while it's on well not while it's on but uh, well you know what i mean right let's take a look at this chip um so does that say something like 1a gng or ia gng probably one let's uh, look that one up um well it's proving very difficult to follow the tracks on this board even with a torch because it's double-sided and some of the tracks seem to go underneath the bridge rectifier there but um mains comes in and goes directly to one side of the bridge mains also comes in and goes to well a component that seems to be shrouded in a piece of rubber there and i'm just wondering whether that's a fuse i think the rubber there is to uh, sort of catch the exploding bits of fuse when it explodes um then it presumably goes through this capacitor it's a 104 so 100 nanofarads uh k400 so 400 volts ac um once rectified it's presumably smoothed by this 400 volt electrolytic there'd be no point in that having the high voltage um unless it's designed for sort of other component failures which may result in a high voltage but my guess is that that's directly across the output of the uh, bridge rectifier in fact i could just check that 
Um, yes, that uh, capacitor is directly across the output of the bridge rectifier, negative to negative, positive to positive. There's a 1K resistor here, which looks like it's a moderately high current and therefore designed to dissipate uh, some power so that it will get moderately warm. Now, I can't find anything on this chip, but it has to be some sort of LED driver chip and the inductor must be uh, part of a circuit which provides current regulation to these LEDs. I did wonder whether I could power those LEDs up to see whether they're in series or parallel um, just by simply connecting the LEDs themselves directly to my power supply at the risk of destroying the um, this chip here. Let's 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 do it. So I need to bring the uh, current down on this. Um, how do we get to see current? That's current half an amp. That's really rather a lot. In fact, I think I might go down to something as small as 20 milliamps. I mean, we only really want to see these things uh, glow a little, don't we? So let's set that. I'm not really interested particularly in a voltage limit, but I do want a current limit. So there's 20 milliamps. Right. Well, I can't get those to light up. One way around, it's uh, 1.4 volts, uh, 20 milliamps, but um, they're not lit. I don't think they're lit. Uh, let's try it the other way round. So I suppose the circuitry is preventing me from directly lighting uh, these LEDs. I could unsolder one side of them, I suppose. Uh, and that's 4.3 volts, but they're still not lit there. Uh, 4.3 volts and the current is 20 milliamps. So I think that's being absorbed by this circuitry. Whether it likes that or not is another matter. Uh, let's try it with um, 12 volts into the mainsy thing again. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have minded that, but I couldn't get them to light up. I might uh, desolder one end actually and have another go at that. Uh, of course, the other way to do this is just to measure the DC voltage across these LEDs. So let's do that. Uh, DC volts, yep. Yeah. Get these on the right place. 85 volts that seems rather implausible but that is no 80 minus oh 84.9 volts why is, why have i got a leading zero i don't know let's try again yeah 84.7 volts that's really weird. I, that's a huge voltage. Why am I getting that? And now using an analog voltmeter uh, set to 250 volts DC, although this rotary switch is so indistinct, I can't guarantee that's actually going to be on 250 volts DC. So let's hope we don't blow it up and see whether we get that same um, 80 odd volts on there. Oh, of course, I don't know which way I'm going yet, do I? Is it that way? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, if that's 250 volts full scale, we're getting a little over 50 volts. So, yeah, that's, well, that meter saying about 60 volts, but it is in that region. Um, so that's interesting. So what are these four LEDs? Are they actually little um, cob LED clusters with multiple LEDs in series? Let's see if we can actually see something. Um, one thing I thought was let's put it the put the welding glass on it and see if we can see and of course we're going to have to focus that uh, to see if there are any bright spots in each of those whoops four LEDs right I've had to shut the exposure on this thing right down I think you can just about make out some bond wires in there but um, it doesn't look to me like they're multiple dots it's very hard to see and it's very hard to control the exposure on this camera but that is a very high voltage isn't it and uh, just to confirm that voltage not that I don't believe my DVM my multimeter or even that analog one but um, I've hooked up the scope uh, leads to the DC output or at least the voltage across the LEDs um, we've got 50 volts per division because I'm using a oh yeah can i do that a times 10 uh, 10 to 1 probe and if i switch that on we go up one division which is 50 volts plus about another 
um, three fifths of a division. So yeah, that's 80 volts uh, DC. Now there is a little noise component on there or a, an AC component. It's very small, but you can just about see it when I switch ranges there. Um, it's in the region of that's 50 microseconds per division, about 20 microseconds. Uh, what's that in frequency? Yes, that's interesting. I thought I'd um, just put my probes on the AC input. Uh, in other words, the AC coming out of this. And of course, what I've completely forgotten is this is not 50 hertz. It's actually 35 kilohertz. Um, I've got something like that's 100 volts per division, 600 volts peak to peak. But what's more interesting is that the reactance of that capacitor, uh, 1 over 2 pi Fc, with the frequency being really high, reactance is going to be really low. So it's not really acting um, as a dropper in the way that it would normally do at uh, 50 hertz. So I'm actually amazed that this is still working. And uh, on that bombshell, um, yes, this is a pretty good light for a pound. Not bad. Cheerio.